we gather as the people of God in the presbytery of Port Phillip East of the Uniting Church in Australia to induct the Reverend Joy Blamires as minister in this congregation. Sisters and brothers in Christ, I welcome you all to this joyful occasion and greet you in the name of God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin our service this afternoon, we pause to acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and to their emerging leaders and acknowledge that this land is sacred to them as it is to us. As a church, we commit, our, sorry, we commit ourselves to reconciliation between first and second peoples of our country and see this as a sign and symbol of that coming reconciliation and renewal, which is the end view for the whole creation. The Presbytery of Port Phillip East has resolved to induct the Reverend Joy Blamires to serve as Minister of the Word in the St Mark's Uniting Church Mornington congregation. Joy, we rejoice that God has called you by the voice of the church to serve Jesus Christ in this congregation and presbytery. I feel blessed to have landed in this role for today as I, along with Helen Beebe, represented the presbytery on the joint nominating committee process, along with Mornington people, Dick, Helen, Ruth, and Sue, Ron, and John. So a big thanks to all those people. And after a lengthy process, it's great to acknowledge that we are here today. So a very warm welcome to everyone on this this very special occasion. As we do at the beginning of a service, we gather together in prayer. And in a moment when we come to the prayer of confession, the words are by um, John Vandelaar. Uh, let's share it together in prayer. Let us pray. God, our maker, we praise you for the gift of community. Thank you for the communities in which we live and work. Thank you for the community that is your body, the church. Encourage us with your word, with the life, death and very presence of your resurrected son, Jesus. And fill us with your spirit so that as one, we reflect your light and love to each other and to the world. In our places of isolation, yet gathered in the spirit, Worshipping together as your community in Mornington and across the Presbytery, we offer you our prayers and our praise. And as a community, we offer now our confession. We are the church, Jesus, but sometimes we fail to believe it. And so we focus more on what divides us and on your call and the unconditional welcome that joins us. May your spirit flow through us to bind and connect us in ways that neither our diversity nor our self-righteousness nor our sin can separate. We are your body, Jesus, but sometimes we fail to act like it. And so we grow more concerned with ourselves and our own survival than the others you call us to serve. May your grace and compassion flow through us to heal and embrace all who are broken and wounded. We are your messengers, Jesus, but sometimes it's easier to carry bad news or no news than to challenge the powers that be or to oppose injustice with the message of the gospel. May your prophetic voice be proclaimed in us in ways that encourage the despairing, liberate the oppressed and hold the powerful accountable. Forgive us when we fail to be who we are, who you have called us to be and teach us to live and to love as your presence in this world. Amen. God in community, Father, Son and Spirit, 
creator, redeemer and sustainer, offers you forgiveness, life and peace, the grace and love to grow, to learn and to start again. We hear then Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We come to the service of the word and uh, Alison is going to begin uh, with the first reading. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke, broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And Helen. Uh, this reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, would you not have love? I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Good afternoon, it's Duncan McLeod speaking. Thank you, Helen, for the reading. And uh, I just want to start by, by reflecting on these being the early days that we are in. Not the early days of the New Testament, but the early days of the situation we find ourselves in with physical isolation. And we have a lot to learn. It's only five weeks ago that we had Joy's ordination service at Leemore Uniting Church. It was the last physical gathering of the presbytery. And I remember it was my last handshake when I uh, put my hand out to shake the person looking after the sound and vision. And we reflected that will be the last handshake either of us will have for a while. It was the first Facebook Live broadcast on the Port Phillip East presbytery page and that was an exciting uh, hour where we tried to work that out, learning as we went, and we're still learning today. It was a time when we had to work from theory to practice, and we're still learning to be the church in a time of physical isolation. The reading we heard today from Acts is about the church, the people of Christ, gathering in Jerusalem, and they are having to work out what it means to be a people of Christ, the people of Jesus at this time. They have to ask the question, where can we meet? How will we learn? Will it be safe? How will we share in the meal that Jesus gave us? How do we learn from each other? How do we work out how to overcome our cultural barriers the languages that we all have. How will we look out 
for the vulnerable, the hungry, and the homeless. And of course, today we look back at that community with admiration. It's a sense in which that was a heroic community in difficult times, in new times. And, and over the centuries, many, many people have aspired to recreate that experience. So what was it about that experience that we like? Well, it was a time of innovation, learning how to work, so to speak, with a new operating system. They had to develop new skills, new ways of communicating, new vocabulary that would describe who they were and what they were about, their understanding of God. They were discovering new gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they were discovering the giftedness of people who shared as ministry agents, apostles and prophets, evangelists, people who were courageous enough to stand up for their faith in the face of adversity. All their members having to find ways of being followers of Christ. But there's another side to innovation, and that is anxiety. When we're on the edge of resources and we don't know whether we'll have enough to pay the bills next week. When we're finding what it means to put new systems in place so we can keep going, sustain what we're doing, sometimes we end up having to put new rules in and then becoming legalistic about them. Well, sometimes we even compete to have the most authentic expression. As we've seen many denominations develop saying they were the most authentic expression of the early church. Which leads us on to Paul talking to the Christians in Corinth. He's talking about the quality of relationships being really important. And through the whole first letter to the Corinthians, we see Paul talking about how to honor one another, how to avoid making some people the heroes and others the has beens, ensuring that all our gatherings look out for the disadvantaged and the overlooked, including our communion services. And then that wonderful chapter that we call 1 Corinthians 13, often read at weddings, which gives us perspective that is about love. And love is about the, the everyday relationships that we take part in. Paul spells out what it means to be a loving community. And then he points out, let's get some perspective. This heroic, difficult, challenging, innovative time will pass. And as much as we're learning about ministry in this new setting, that learning may become irrelevant in the long term. But it's the quality of our relationships, our relationships with Christ and with each other that really counts. Paul writes about looking in the mirror and getting a sense of what's happening. And he may have been referring to the burnished metal mirrors that were being made in Corinth at the time, not the glass ones that we see. But if he was writing today, maybe he'd be talking about Zoom meetings, where depending on people's internet connection, some people, some of us, we phase in and out. And sometimes we freeze and then unfreeze. There's a sense of frustration that we can't really be in the room with one another as much as we'd like to be. And there's a delay, of course, in who we, how we operate with one another. But someday we will see each other face to face, where we will see each other live in the flesh. And then, just as now, it will be love that counts. Yeah, I'll just get my notes back again. In the meantime, we are called to be focused on being a community that embodies the love of Christ. And that's a great place for you, Joy, as you start with the people of St. Mark's Mornington. And it's a great place for you, St. Mark's Mornington, to be starting your relationship with Joy, because this is the early days. This is the beginning point of a new way of being the church at the moment. And so together, you and Joy, together, 
are able to develop relationships of trust, conversations marked with curiosity and respect, finding ways of sharing, not just with one another, but also the wider community, the love of Christ. And so today, we gather around you as a cloud of witnesses, encouraged by your beginning, and also recognizing that we are also learning with you. And today, we want to honor that in the way you begin. Amen. Chairperson, through the joint discernment of the church, the Reverend Joba Myers has been called to be Minister of the Word in the St. Mark's Uniting Church Congregation, Mornington. I ask you now to induct her into this placement. Joy, my sister in Christ, you are called to be a servant and a shepherd in this congregation. It is your work to preach Christ's gospel, to call people to repentance, to assure them of God's mercy and to baptize. You will teach, inspire and encourage, both by word and example, the people entrusted to your care. You will lead them in worship and celebrate the Lord's Supper with them. You will take Christ the Good Shepherd as your example, caring for his people and serving with them in the witness to the world. In view of this solemn trust, we ask you to reaffirm the declaration of faith and obedience that you made at your ordination, as Duncan said, just five weeks ago, and to show that you desire, by God's grace, to continue your ministry in this congregation. Do you confess anew Jesus Christ as Lord? I do. Do you embrace the faith and unity of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church as set forth in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments expressed in the Apostles and Nicene Creeds and described in the basis of union? I do. Do you accept the discipline of the Uniting Church and the oversight of this presbytery? I do. Do you affirm and commit yourself to the covenant made between the Uniting Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress and the Uniting Church and accept the obligation to serve both First and Second Peoples? I do. And will you take part in the work of this presbytery and other councils of the Uniting Church and will you share in the life and witness of the wider church? I will. David, let me invite you to, Joy is just going to show us the symbols of Bible, the jug of water and bread and wine that have been placed in the church. And David, I'll invite you to say, We, the people of God, have placed the Holy Bible, water and bread and wine in the church, signs of the ministry to which you were ordained. And John Renouf. Joy. You have been presented with a copy of the church roll, St. Mark's United Church, Mornington. It is your duty to care for the people entrusted to you. And as we come to offer a, the prayer of induction, uh, can I invite you all to raise a hand as if uh, in a sign of blessing and let us pray together. God, in every age, you have chosen servants to speak your word and lead your people. We thank you for joy whom you have called to serve you. Fill her with the Holy Spirit and give her gifts for this ministry. May she have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and be a faithful disciple, being an example to the people of God and witnessing before the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sovereign head of the church and by the authority of the presbytery of Port Phillip East, we now declare Joy Blamise to be inducted in the congregation of St. Mark's Uniting Church, Mornington. And let me uh, invite you, yeah, to do an online clap. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, the church declares that its members shall acknowledge Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord, confess the Christian faith, accept the discipline of the church and share in its ministry. 
So can I invite all the members of Presbytery to unmute yourselves and to just raise a hand so we can see who all the members of Presbytery are. Joy, take a moment just to have a flick through the screens if you like, so you can see everybody. And uh, okay. the response is, we will in the love of Christ. So will you support your sister Joy in the discharge of her responsibilities to minister of the word within this presbytery? We will. Will. And I invite uh, members of Presbytery to offer a word of welcome. <laughs> welcome, Joy. Congratulations. Welcome, Joy. Welcome, Joy. Welcome, Joy. Welcome, Joy. Great to have you part of the directory again. Is Members of the congregation of St. Mark's, if you would like to unmute yourselves and raise a hand so that Joy can see who you are. And we'll give Joy a moment just to flick through the screens and have a look at everybody. And Anne, the chairperson of the church council. Joy, I greet you as our new minister. I thank you the people of God in this congregation. Ministers with you in the gospel, and I commend them to your prayers. On their behalf, I greet you. So, so members of the St. Mark's congregation, uh, there's a couple of questions, and the response is, we will, the Lord being our helper. We will, the Lord being our helper. Will you take part in the public worship of God and contribute to the work of God as you are able? Will you endeavour to make a Christian witness in the community by word and action? We will. We will. We will. We will. And will you honour Joy as your pastor and leader? Will you listen for God's word in her preaching? Will you welcome her into your homes? Will you provide for her that which is necessary for her physical welfare and will you at all times support her with your love and prayers? We will. We will. Being our helper. And I might just ask members of the church council if you could raise your hand so that Joy can hopefully catch a glimpse. Joy, this is the church council of the St. Mark's Uniting Church Mornington Congregation. You are called to work with them in building up the body of Christ. So this question is for Joy and the Church Council. And the response again is, we will, the Lord being our helper. Joy and the Church Council, will you work together in harmony and trust to lead God's people to further and to further Christ's mission in this world? We will. We will, the Lord being our helper. I just want to thank you so much for the warmth of your welcome now and in the days preceding this time. And at last we're here. I know it's been a long journey for St. Mark's, long period of time with supply ministry, and a long journey for me in a different way. It was the end of 2014 when I felt called to apply to train as a minister for the of the word. And five and almost a half years later, we're here today to actually begin. We're all aware, as we've been thinking about with Duncan's reflection about the changed community that we're in at the moment, and I couldn't have expected that it would be like this when I was beginning, as you couldn't either. It's an unusual point in world history. So much has changed just in this last six weeks. But the pandemic is also giving us a chance to reflect and to analyse what's really important to us. All our churches, as we've seen, are engaging in different ways of being church and being a community, connecting. And some of these are proving really effective. 
And I know the community here at St Mark's has been doing that as well. And it's been wonderful from a little afar to watch some of that happening. As we go into the future, we'll need to continue to look at these things. Some of these things could be well worthwhile retaining in some form. So it's important to look at what we're thinking about them and how they might engage our communities into the future. I'm passionate about the local church being a community where everyone can come and feel at ease, where they can connect with other people and where they can encounter God. And I also know the importance of the local church community itself being well nourished in its faith and given opportunities to use the gifts God has given to you. So I look forward to sharing with you together in worship and prayer and study as we nurture these processes and use them as a community. I recognise that I'm about to get to know you in very different ways to how previous ministers will have got to know you. We're going to use different measures, at least initially, whilst we're under social restrictions. So we'll be using lots of phones and computers and, and perhaps even letters to get to know one another. Earlier this year, I heard Jeff Thompson at an induction commenting that someone had likened the process we've been through and got to today as something like an arranged marriage. For a long while, a whole lot has been happening behind the scenes with two parties getting together to see if this might work for this place at this time. And then finally, on the day of induction, you all get to meet one another. And it's, it's almost like a wedding, but for us, that wedding's a little different because we're still separated and can't celebrate in quite the same way. So too, for me getting to know you, it might be a bit like a distant relationship because there will be that physical boundary at times. Yet, I want you to know that I want you to contact me whenever you want to or need to or feel it would be good to do so. My phone will always be available to you, so you can certainly make use of that. It's a good time as we move into the future to reaffirm our commitment to being the body of Christ in community in whatever form that may take. And it may take some unusual forms, but that's fine. One day we'll get to be together as we are used to being in the past, and that will be wonderful. Thank you for your faith in me in issuing this call to me to serve you as your minister. Thank you for your prayers, and please continue to pray for me. This is God's church, and we need to know God's guidance and the equipping of God's spirit for the future as we live out our faith each day. So thank you for inviting me to join you on this journey. Thanks, Joy. And uh, let me invite Dick to uh, lead us in prayer. Our Father and our God, we come to praise and worship you by bringing before you the needs of the world, our community, our local fellowship and ourselves. We give thanks that you encourage us to open all our cares and concerns before you, knowing that you care for those issues too. We give thanks that by your spirit at work in us, you enable us to be active in everyday issues by praying and working for the care of others. We hold out to you our troubled and uncertain world in which many are suffering and dying without any sense of your love and care. Father God, please give wisdom and strength to medical advisors and decision makers for the ability to think clearly and act decisively. Bless medical and emergency staff with courage and persistence in the face of unremitting problems and distressed and mourning citizens. Make our daily prayers part of your compassionate response to the disaster facing those on the front line. We bring the Reverend Joy and ourselves as a congregation before you, seeking your blessing and guidance over the coming years. We thank you that you have called us into a covenant relationship whereby we are committing ourselves to each other under you as our Lord and King. Now in some words I have found helpful this week. Holy and pain-bearing God, 
who on the cross experienced desolation and despair, walk with us through the present darkness and grant us a glimpse of your glory to come. Father God, when the news is bleak, steady us. When the pain is bitter, surround us. When the days blur, sustain us. When despair burdens, still us. In our weakness, make us strong. In our lowness, lift us up. Confident that our Redeemer lives and prays for us and will never let us go. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for being part of this unusual but very important occasion this afternoon. And let me offer our thanks to the Presbytery team who have um, organised and helped us navigate the technology this morning. To all, the, uh, to all of you who have uh, worked with the technology and learnt it, especially for this occasion, a big thank you to you and to the tech support people and the family members and all those people that have offered assistance in making sure people could be connected. Um, a big thanks to all those people too. I'm sure in time when we're again meeting in person, St Mark's will plan another welcome and I'm sure that members of the Presbytery would welcome an invitation to participate in that occasion too. So some sending words for us all uh, from Jan Richardson. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all creation. May this path run through our life. May we be the road Christ takes. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those for whom you love and pray this day and forevermore. Amen.